Yes. Can you hear me? I can. I can. Can you hear me? Oh, how weird. It's just coming through the wrong speaker, and I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Are you is on a PC? Or is this a Zoom meeting? It is. It's so... Wait, wait. I think I know my problem. I'm just weirded out that it's not coming through my headphones. I think I know the problem. Yes. Can you hear me now? I can. I can hear you. Oh, yay. Everything's perfect me? now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. How are you? <clears throat> I'm fine. And you're here in Arizona, right? I am. I'm I'm over here in Tempe. Are you are you in Phoenix or what area? What part are you in? I, I'm in Tucson. You're in Tucson. I, I love Tucson also. <laughs> oh, I love Tucson. I really do. And tell because me I'm not to prepared to be on the movie thing. <laughs> I'm like, ah. <laughs> It'll let you block it out. Is there? There should be a little camera thing. You just can turn it off. I'm. I'm not either. Oh, but. Yeah, you don't. Oh, okay, cool. I just didn't do that. There. <laughs> oh, there you go. Can you still hear me? Anyway. Good. Uh, this is my first time. I I went on the last two weeks, and there was nobody here. Really? I did miss last week, but we were on the week before, but only one person was here. So Yeah, I, I tried. And then and then I think for the the first week I actually had the time wrong. <laughs> I'm like, oh, because it shows yeah. up at eleven o'clock. Yep, you she's know, got on, on central everything's time. Eastern. Uh -huh. And somehow I even got it moved back to seven, nine, and eleven. So I'm like, whatever. So how long have you been in real estate? I've been in real estate for 18 years. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, I've come across a lot of deals that I thought, this is, boy, I don't know what to do with this. So I just joined um, one coaching program. Oh, good. That's, Given me a good direction to lead me to a lot of other stuff. Well, they're teaching you creative finance and things like that. Well, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Actually, I have a couple of questions anyway. Uh, what? Tell me about you, since I don't know about you. Sure. You're highly rated um, by the founders here. <laughs> Um, I, well, I, I'm not sure where Stacy and I connected up. I also have been in real estate, I guess, just since 2005. So about 16 years. And most of those years were in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, I started out as an agent working with investors and wholesaling and fixing and flipping. And back before everyone else knew how to work short sales, I did, I ran a short sale negotiation company last time the market crashed. So um, I started working for a real estate education company in 2016 and really helping people all over the country just figure out really the basics of wholesaling, even fix and flip, and then helping them make their deals out of non-deals, kind of what you said exactly. So um, helping them with contracts, yeah. talking with sellers, whatever it is that comes up. But I've been with them from 2016 until today. And I moved out here because they're headquartered out of Phoenix. And uh, I also manage their local team uh, up until the end of last year. And now I really just work acquisitions for them, talking to sellers and going to seller appointments and putting them under contract. We do probably eight to 10 deals a month. Um, and now then it's a group, a group of investors. Is that what you said? It is. Uh huh. Yeah, we've got three owners. Uh huh. So, and they've got a division that's most that's all wholesaling, and then the other division is uh, I've got a GC that runs the rehabs and 
they're actually piloting a new program where they have people pick out the, uh, it's called pick your next pad and they're getting ready to come out with a way for people to purchase houses that need a lot of work. We fix them up and then they can get the financing um, mostly because inventory is so low here. It's almost impossible for a buyer to find a house. <laughs> I'm sure right. it's on too, but man, is it rough. They're just, uh, I don't know, double digit offers on everything and way over asking price. And usually they're picking cash offers. It's, it's rough to be an agent and working with buyers if they're not no paying kidding. Cash. So yeah, I've got some that can't find a property. We, and sometimes we have, we, we do probably 25, maybe 20% 20 of our business up in Tucson. So um, we had a hotel up there. I can't think of the name of that neighborhood on Paseo Bloodioso. It was a neighborhood with larger houses. I don't know the Tucson market super well. I've been up there just a few times to get the deal done or whatever we need to do at a property, but we like it. We work with KMS up there a lot. Um, they buy a lot of properties and fix them up. So are you an agent up there or you've just been investing for 18 years? No, no. As a matter of fact, I'm brand new to investing and, and I'm uh, uh, not moving forward like I would like to see me do because I'm just over analyzing everything okay um, i am so. highly analytical too so you do not have a real estate license no i'm a realtor i've been a realtor Are. i have okay. i have not been in investing what i found out when i moved here because the market is very different and the uh, the whole first year i was here was hard i was used to doing deals two or three by myself every month as an investor in, in Knoxville. And when I came here, I did not realize that they were, people were banking on future appreciation even six months down the road or four months down the road when they finished the rehab. So I kept meeting with sellers and not being able to get properties under contract. And it was super frustrating. I thought, man, what am I doing wrong here? Um, but it's really that everyone else was just buying at a slightly higher number and they were still able to wholesaler moved that property but it took me a whole yeah. year it was the first year I only did one deal <laughs> when I was here and I thought I was like man maybe I need to go back home <laughs> right <I> doing <laughs> but we did we did get it figured out um so when you say that you're not able to turn those into deals you mean they just don't want to take a number that works for a fix and flip or, or for a investment property so you're trying to look at creative ways to offer them more actually i didn't say i wasn't able to turn them into deals i'm brand new okay and i'm, I'm actually looking at my first purchase going oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and are you wanting to keep it and fix it up or are you going to wholesale it one or the other most likely wholesale because I decided that I was going to start out in the business wholesaling um, because that's the safest route when you don't have a, a yep. pocket of money. I agree. Well, and I almost think the market is so strong that you make some, in some cases almost just as much <laughs> than if you did the work and fixed it and flipped it. Um, yeah. It surprised me what things are selling for. So yeah. So one of the things that that I've heard is that because the market's so strong, so much is going on to find to find uh, general contractors. You know, people to do your rehab for you is is hard. It is, and the prices have gone up both for materials and labor. Because yeah. they are so busy that the costs are up. We found that out, not even, not just this market, the other markets that we work to, the labors got super expensive, particularly electricians and plumbers and like specialized trades. So it seems to me like everyone I've dealt with, they're almost like prima donnas now. They're like <laughs> these, I am a lumberjack and I'm okay. And I <laughs> rule the world. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh my God. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I can't remember who we, we've used, done a couple up in Tucson. We tend to wholesale up there more because RGC is here out of Phoenix, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure it can be done. It's, it's just a, a process of making, making sure you've got all the paperwork and try to keep them in line. I didn't love it. I had a partner when we were flipping and she managed the contractors. Um, yeah because she was better able to keep them in line. I mostly was on the lead generation marketing side of the business. So, all right. So, so I'm just little potatoes, but I do see there's somebody else on the line too. I do, I do. Let's see. I think it did it say Ron. Let's see. Hi, Ron. Can you hear us? Let's see if he hops on. He's got himself muted right now. So... All right. And so, and I'm, and I'm sure that in terms of leads, you've got access to Monsoon up there as well, right? Uh, right. I actually have, I, I actually have my license here and there as well, just because I lived up there. I lived in Mesa for a long, long time. Huh. I lived in Tucson a long time. I lived in Mesa a long time. Then I came back to Tucson and, um, and I have a couple of clients up there that just beg me not to let go of my license up there. They even offer <laughs> to pay for them because they don't want to work with anyone else. And I'm like, well, okay. Oh, that's amazing. That speaks volumes. I know. Yeah, yeah, that, that does. I love Monsoon. I wish we had had it in, in Tennessee, but I, you may already know this. If not, I'll go. We pull some of our lists from here. So, you know, landlords are kind of, and a hurt right now. A lot of our deals are coming from distressed landlords where tenants aren't paying and they've got, you know, still got the COVID restrictions they're able to fall back on. And if they say that they don't, the tenant doesn't have to get out even if they're not paying, but we use this owner intended use and um, whatever zip code we're trying to work. If you're looking for lists to see, I have to, I have to. so, <clears throat> So we can pull those landlords and skip trace and call, but it makes it easy to pull those list of properties by zip code. So some of that lead generation will be good for you as well, especially being an agent. If you can't do something with it on the investor side, a lot of them will go ahead and list. And then these people will also be your potential buyers, you know, if they own this many properties. Yeah. In the same zip code. So this is, I use Monsoon a lot, both for leads to <clears throat> find motivated sellers and for buyers. I also like this finance type here. You can find people that have the seller carrybacks. I've had a couple of those deals come back through. Most people never close on those, but they can still sell them to you <clears throat> as long as it doesn't say it's not assignable. So seller carryback, or if you're just looking for your cash buyers, you can change it to all cash. But even our company could pay cash and they don't. We use a hard money lender on, on most of it. So, yeah. Um, all right. So, Ron, can you hear us? <laughs> all right. I was hoping you come on. <clears throat> I don't yeah. mind it um what we talk about necessarily we were going to talk about lead generation but tell me where you think i can help you most since it's just us three and i can talk about it i i do have a, a question that just came up okay because i i went to look at a property again this is my very first property to just go out okay. and look at and um and so, so I pulled up the assignment of real estate purchase and sale agreement. Uh -huh. And the question that I was going to ask um, anyone <laughs> that would listen is, I'm sure you do a lot of those, right? Yes. If you said you do wholesale. Uh -huh. the, what is, yeah, what is the typical, and I, and I get the title thing, 
and I get numbers things, but what is the typical if you're if if you're fine if you're wholesaling, what is the typical amount that is put in the uh, consideration and the deposit? We have. Is I've seen it with a lot. But we have typed in. We have one thousand dollars typed in ours. Um, I've seen people do it with less, but we rarely, rarely have anyone say anything. And if they do, we typically bump it to two thousand. But usually, if it's already typed in and you're not handwriting it, because uh -huh. when it's typed, it looks like it's what you usually do, and it's not a up for up for change, even though it is. Yeah typed in we don't get near as much kickback or pushback and uh, yeah. we put a thousand dollars in sometimes too once in a while somebody will say they want more and need more but it's not not very often so okay now which which side of the which side which side are are you on when you say about the one thousand dollars so you found oh, the property uh -huh. and you want to wholesale it yep right so we're going to write a contract up with the seller with myself as the buyer or the or my llc and, and place yeah. that thousand dollars earnest money when we assign it on the back end and use the assignment of contract mm -hmm. we typically ask for five thousand dollars non-refundable okay so that's that's actually the part i was asking for yes so um, so when you do the buy when you do when you do the purchase contract you put in a thousand dollars Mm -hmm. And then, and then, so you ask for five thousand dollars on the assignment contract. We do. And then, and then, so there's another place. I it, I don't know that they're all alike, but there's okay. another place on this. There's uh, lines one through eight, um, and then it, on line eight, it has a deposit of X dollars has been made payable to the assign or. So it has one now, therefore, and in consideration of the sum, I'm putting $5,000 and other goods and valuable consideration, the receipt and sufficiency of which are hereby acknowledged. A signer has a, a sign transferred and sold and conveyed, blah, 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 you know. And, uh, then it's, and then on the other one, it has a deposit of, has been made payable to the signer. So there's two amounts that, you know, I was wondering if they were percentages or what, but you said you typically have $5,000 for the yep. assignee. Yes, and I'm wondering if that's, if it's not just restating yours in the same way, I, you can. It feels right. like it, it feels like it, but I'm like, why? Yeah, I printed it out and put a big question mark. It, it and I'm like, I'm gonna ask the first person I can, <laughs> not you. <laughs> Yeah, it should be five thousand. Oh, and, well, there's and yours it, right there. Yeah, okay. this is actually another person that we're working with, but they all are about the same. So you can see here they're trying to not disclose exactly what they're making, and so this sentence is used instead of saying I'm paying, you know, two twenty three. There's a ten thousand dollar assignment. This is saying the total purchase price is two hundred thirty three. So they're trying to hide it, which our market, I never have another investor push back, and we see thirty and forty thousand dollar assignments on a fairly regular basis. So, okay, yours is a lot better. This one, this one doesn't even. I don't even see that this one shows. But the earnest money, it should say that title is going to hold that, and up there in Tucson, absolutely, yeah, uh, Pioneer title. Uh, is who we work with when we're up there. They do a good job. I had a lot oh, of trouble. Great. That's good to know. With Stuart Title, a lot of trouble. <laughs> On that one deal, I told you I did the first year we were here. It was tough. <laughs> but they, wow. didn't they didn't understand and um, almost blew that closing totally. Where do I get a copy of an assignment agreement like yours i have one let me see if i can i've got a good one that's blank let's see let's see if i can 
can get one off there. I'll share it with you. I, I like that as opposed to this one because I'm I'm very familiar with legalese and this is just like what <laughs> it does it doesn't say that much and, and it it doesn't have well I guess if you're assigning a contract all the things are in it but I like the fact that yours has a money and disclosing what you make is not something that should be necessary of course yeah it's not we use them both but that was one i'll have to i may have to set find ours that one came that was a different one that i was helping somebody with let's see i've got one non-disclosure assignment i was hoping i could grab it while you were on here let's see non-disclosure well, I think I'll usurp you as much as I can. Like, <laughs> <laughs> It'll make it easier. Sometimes even just uh, having somebody to bounce it off of is like, okay, I'm right. I've got the I numbers know. right. I've got the right. And it's like, I just want to ask. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I was um, I was on the Tucson real estate. I, I guess it's investor site. Um, any, um, the one for Tucson, I guess it's the one, the Arizona investor, the Tucson broke breakout. And there was one nice man that said, Hey, anything you need, let me know. I'll even go to a property and hit because the rehab costs are always like, yeah, what? Yeah. Right? They're tricky. Until you, till, till you know a bunch of it. Like the one I looked at yesterday, it, it it's a disaster but it's but it's but it's a really cool place and a really you know a really up and coming neighborhood so, so i've been playing i've been playing with those figures and then i'm like well my son might not want to do this so i i probably will need to go ahead and and wholesale it It'll go, no. you'll be able to do, and so you, you're not quite under contract yet, or you are? No, as a matter of fact, the reason why I haven't rushed into it, it, it was on the MLS, and, mm -hmm. uh, and it was made clear by the <coughs> seller agent and the owner who was at the property. <coughs> he insists on being, he walks you through it and everything, um, that they're just going to look at all contracts on Sunday night. Okay. So, so my, and I'm just like, well, I need to go through the iterations, even if I lose, which is a good chance, except I felt like I had an amazing rapport with the seller. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean, you never know if that helps. No, I think it does. And I, I, it's probably my least favorite thing when they say they're going to collect offers, you know, just want to see all of them that come in. I, I like to ask them, you know, well, we talk a lot about whether the buy all of the buyers, sometimes they choose to tell you whatever number they think will get the deal and come back and renegotiate after the fact, you know, during right. this period. And so we don't talk ever yeah. talk bad, of course, about any company because it doesn't, it's not a good look, but we do let them know that that is how some operate. And uh, the number we give is the real number that we're trying to make work. You know, we don't have intent yeah. of them back and renegotiating. So some of that helps some, especially if you've got before. And then we typically ask them, you know, in the event that you have, you know, a couple offers that are, if they were hypothetically exactly the same, what are you going to use to make your decision? Yeah. And some of them will say, um, if I could leave some stuff in the house, you know, and, and the buyer will clean it out. Some of them will just say whoever I like better, but try to keep them talking. Um, as man, multiple offers. Yeah. 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 And I wasn't planning. I keep seeing that you can get them off the MLS. I wasn't planning that that was going to really work, but this, this, this particular property, they actually, I mean, it's a small property and that's where I need to start, you know, down low because, because you're going to make mistakes at first. And I want my mistakes to be at a smaller dollar amount. 
Yeah. So it was listed at 150 and now and now uh I guess nothing worked and he's uh they changed the the offer price to a hundred thousand. Oh really? And the, and the place is a mess. Let's just I mean, go be is, good. <laughs> yeah, this is the guy that's lived in it for like 40 years and way deferred maintenance. And they did an inspection on it, and with a good offer, you'll get the inspection report. So, but I oh, have good. a feeling total roof replacement, windows, everything, except some of the flooring. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, the repair part will get easier, and of course, everybody can get the job done at different prices. So as long as you're in the right ballpark, I usually try to figure out the major items like what you were talking about does it need a roof okay you know that's seven thousand dollars and it could be a lot more depending on the size of the house and whether it's, yeah, it's uh, small. asphalt or, or concrete tile but i go through the roof the heat and air uh, plumbing and electrical and uh, kitchen and bathrooms and, and figure those out and then the rest of the items are easier to do by the whole house Okay, interior yeah. paint, that's $2, you know, $2 a square foot and, and try to just rent it like that. On a small house, usually you can say, okay, probably $25 a square foot. That'll get you pretty far unless it's a complete wreck. But when you get down to a house that is super small and it needs everything, sometimes that number doesn't work. Yeah, so to yeah. Say well, this one seems... This one actually seems to need everything except some of the flooring and the heat and air is just okay. But it seems to need just about everything else. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. But it's in a good place, you know, with um, with how a lot of a lot of rehabs have been done around it and house is much much more expensive yeah so i do have this one i'll be able to share with you and this uh, in our market this should be five thousand i don't we don't have any problem huh. getting people to pay that five thousand oh okay so have that if i get your email i can share it do you want me to type it in yeah thank you I haven't gotten my new email address yet. This is my real estate one. Oh, I see it. Oh, gosh, I called somebody that works for the same company you do this week, but I think she works down in uh, Safford area. Yeah. Yeah, we've got them all over Southern Arizona here. None up in oh, okay. Phoenix. I don't know why they've chosen to do that. It, the the owners of this company, you know, it's a really great, you know, uh, it's it's a really good, great company with um, that as we speak has grown to the biggest company in Tucson because of number really? of agents. Now we've still got we've still got some old timers out there. Uh, like Long Realty is the biggest company with money because they've got some old timers out there doing the million dollar properties. Anyway, this couple who's, who's been in, God, I don't even know how long, but maybe at least 20 years or something, but they, they're a spinoff from them. They, like oh. Long Realty, they charge like almost $20,000 a year to be associated with them. Mm. You know how all companies say we have the best training, we have the best this, the best that, the best yeah. the other. What I want is 100% commission. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I am the company that I'm with is $350 per transaction. Yeah, I think this one comes to $395. Oh, that's how it is for your right. Yeah, including individual E and O on the properties, you know. Yeah. And admin, everything, three ninety-five. So I'm good with that. 
Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, it was a lot where I came I came from a well independent and then from Keller Williams. And when I moved to Keller Williams, I didn't realize how expensive it was going to be back in yeah. Knoxville. Oh yeah, I had a a friend here in Tucson when I moved back here to Tucson that just kept after me on Keller Williams. And and I'm and he's like, We're you know, we're family and we're we're a great team. And I'm like, <laughs> I have a family and I I don't do teamwork well. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, please stop. Please stop. I mean, he got the prize down to twelve thousand a year, and I'm like, just stop. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that, because you know it's a great company if you want to build a business out of building agents. Mm -hmm. And you know that's that's a great deal. And EXP, you know, I think they're even a better deal, but but it's yeah. just not for me. It's just not for me. I'm I'm just way too independent. Yeah, I like uh, I like working at a individual company. I do. Yeah. Independent company. I'm gonna see if I had a repair estimate sheet that would help you. I have one that's all on one page. I might need to. I actually edit. was looking for one. I thought I downloaded somewhere the other day that was really good but i think it was yeah i did play with that one today it just didn't go into the repair estimates like i wanted it to i've got one that's kind of all on one sheet i used to take it to the properties when i was first figuring it out and the, have the contractor or the end buyer do it and i would do it and then compare the numbers that does take yeah. just a minute to figure it out Let's see. I think this little property, everybody that's going to look at it right now, really busy because at 100,000, everybody that goes there is probably going to put an offer on it. Yeah, and that price range probably so. Well, yeah, I mean, but that's, that's basically, it was more comfortable to me. Okay, here I do. But I almost had a feeling that I could get it just because I had such a good rapport with the seller. He's an old hippie like me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've heard it. I've, I have seen it happen before. I have. All right. So he showed, have... he showed me the house. He has a contract on. He's buying a church in somewhere like in Missouri that he's going to make into some kind of commune or something. <laughs> really? That's super cool. And the picture of the church is just precious, you know, like an old timey church with all the spires and everything small. It's just precious. Ooh, that's really cool. Let's see. What I'm seeing. And this is not the one I was thinking, but I do. I'm just going to stick these notes on the bottom. I don't know where I got this one from, but I see what I said. It had a couple of two things missing which used to be the hardest thing for me to figure out, oh, I see where this came from, was about the trim and the doors, but I finally got it down right here. For some reason, it's not on this sheet. So 1,500 square feet oh. trim and doors, we usually put in three grand. So it just makes you not have to calculate each of those things individually. On wholesale, it don't have to be exact. Yeah. Um, and this is kind of when I think we just talked about when I walk through a house, kind of how I put it together. Then I do the five square foot items and then the forgotten cost. People forget to add this in. But. Yeah, that's cool. And you're willing to share that? Yeah, I'm getting ready to share it to you now. Let's see. Your email went, Ron, if you want me to share it with you, send over that, uh, your email. Pictures go. Let's see. Check. Mm -hmm. 
next thing. You've got any way of coming home to the mic. Maybe you want to open it, period. All right, well, you've got it. So it'll let you download it. Yeah, I'm kind of a little new to this thing. So how, how do how, how do I send, get my email to you? Um, you can tell it to me, or is there a chat box at the bottom of your screen? Okay, go to the chat box. Okay. Yeah. It's not a multifamily. Yeah. If I find that other one, I'll give it to. I like this one okay. I like the other one a little better. These are a little low. Um, these are not going to go for that. Let's see. Yeah, this one actually is good too. So. And your one layer of shingles added. We don't have a lot of shingles here. No. <laughs> but there no. are. The funny thing on those concrete tile roofs, and that was something I had to get used to, is even when they're old, most of them are just putting a, another barrier in. It's very rare, even if they're 30 years old, that we're replacing them. Even on the high-end houses, they're just putting in a new barrier, which surprises me. Uh, yeah, they usually, they usually have to be pretty bad for to record to want to want you to redo the whole roof because you know they've had so many layers there. I was trying to find I have another sheet. This one came from Flip to Freedom. I don't know. I got some of everything everywhere, but I have one I like better. I can see if I can find it. Repair. Click repair. But I still don't think concrete tile roofs are on there. Or uh Tire roofs, I mean. Elastomeric. <laughs> what is it? You know, flat roofs. Oh, fl oh my gosh. Oh, we had one of those be a super pain this week. But uh, I think it's going to close. We found some, especially up in Tucson, I there's so many smaller areas but they still wholesale well even over like we said Safford and, and Benson and and Wilcox we've got one in Wilcox right now I'm surprised at how far out properties are still selling there really um, yeah it is it, it is surprising me and they are still selling um even mobile homes as long as they've got some land with them so yeah Let's see that sheet, Ron. Let me see if your email's on here. Ron, are you in up in Tucson or Phoenix or where are you at? Which one? I think that cut out. I couldn't hear him either. There he is. There's his email. Yeah. Hi, Ron. And so, and it's can, you, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. we can. Hello. Hello. Hi there. Hello. Okay. Yeah. So actually, I'm in. Actually, I'm in Louisiana. I just was coming. Trying to get basic information, oh. but I was trying to find out. Oh, very cool. What part of Louisiana? Yeah. I'm outside of New Orleans, basically about 30 miles. But I was in New Orleans. Yeah. I have, I, Louisiana is a good market too. A, a lot of people buy rental property there because it's so much more affordable. I have a friend that's in, and I hope I don't say it wrong, Slidell. 
Yeah, yeah, I know where exactly. Yeah, that's that's uh, so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she's doing about oh 15 deals plus a month. Really? <laughs> she's really? A lot. She, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so wow. um, girl. So yeah. how, how she get how she getting leads? How's the marketing what is she doing? I mean, you have an idea? Uh, she does a lot of uh post-it notes to be honest they're post-it notes that uh and she leaves them in public and on people's door and it looks kind of like the piece of paper that ups leaves you you know when you're not home or whatever right um she she uses those um a lot hey if you want to sell your house but it looks kind of official i guess so people read it because it does look like a ups uh, note um so, so, I think so how, how, how do you how do you do that i mean do you go you put on people Anybody houses have somebody? Uh, yes, pick houses. They door knock, so door knocking is not my favorite, but I know it works right. to get face to face. Right. But if they don't answer, they're sticking it to the door like you would leave a note. But she's oh. also leaving them in public areas. So back before COVID hit, I know it was school football games. They were able to put those on the stall on the inside and in the bathroom mirrors and i it was the post -it, so, the, po the post -it notes in the bathroom yes 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 because mm. nobody has anything better to look at when they're there um, <laughs> so, putting I mean, them it, everywhere so it, that's um, not i mean it's not a, a violation i mean i mean people don't complain about that i mean basically one i mean it's, it's a good idea, it's a good idea. Huh? So i'll go see if i can find a picture of this post it note i I need to uh, buy some. I haven't really, but I know that's where she was getting a lot of hers from. Um, but really, I've even got a picture of it and probably the company they came from. So it's nice. You can, it allows you to hand out a bunch. Yeah. That's cool because I, I, saw, I saw another distressed property as I was driving the neighborhood where I was at. Yesterday. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I like the um, driving for dollars app, uh, batch driven. We use that um, some when we're driving for dollars. That or um, what's the other one called? There's two, batch driven and uh, <laughs> I can't think of the name of the other one. But Deal it allows you to really want that. Deal machine app. Yep, that's right. It'll allow you to drive and track where you've been and just point your phone at the house or find it on the map and click it and it pulls up the owner's info. You can save it uh, right then. And the batch driven, it, you can also skip trace right there on the spot and call them if you want to and push the button to send them a postcard right there at that same at that same second if you want to. Okay, so, so, so I can check, check those out. Best driven as a batch apps, driven. Yeah. It makes it a lot easier to keep up with uh, with your driving for dollar stuff for sure. I have to look, I have to look those up. That's that's like pretty good. I mean, you can check the uh, send them a note or whatever uh, a buzz mm -hmm. and red while you're in the neighborhood huh? and take pictures yep. of the property. Yeah. Yep, it brings it up, brings up the tax records, tells you whether it's an owner occupant or a uh, absentee owner. It'll show you what they paid for it. Uh, if they've got any equity, it, it gives a lot of information. You got a free week trial on it. It looks like right here. How much? How much does it cost these apps? How much they cost after the trial? I, I can't remember if this one's forty nine or ninety nine. Let me see. Everything's expensive in real estate, boy. <laughs> yeah, man, but I guess. Oh, well, if you're making money, like, I guess it's not bad. That's true. I think it's one of the less expensive ways, and I think it's one of the ways to get ahead of the curve. So we can buy lists everywhere, you know, that anyone else can. You can pull absentee lists, you can pull code violations, you can get lists just like anyone else. But for, and particularly in terms of vacant houses, a house is marked as vacant only through USPS, the Postal Service. And the way that process works for them is when a property appears to be vacant, the postman starts marking it no stat. And once it has been marked no stat for 90 days, so three months, they then can mark it vacant. So 
all of these companies that are selling lists of vacant properties, they're technically, we can get ahead of them up to 90 days ahead of them by driving for dollars and going out and looking in our own neighborhoods and our own routes because those there's no way possible for a house to be marked vacant. It stays on that no stat list until either, you know, it's uh, the mail's changed or somebody changes uh, the postman sees that it's empty for a full 90 days. So I like driving for dollars. It, this one tracks your routes. You can have team members and uh, track there. So if you've got a family member that maybe they do landscaping or pool cleaning or whatever it is that they would be out, they can also put the app on their phone, take pictures, and it will notify you that, uh, you know, John found a house, you know. And so that way, if you're able to make a deal off something they bring you, you can pay a bird dog reward. So team management, owner lookups, equity, built-in skip tracing, text campaigns, and direct mail. So pretty cool to have it all in one place. So which one do you think is the best? The, uh, the best uh, app? All of these work together. The whole thing comes on batch driven. So best driven so is the app has all of best, those features. So best driven is, is probably the better one? Yeah, I like, I think it has more, yes. And it does, it looks just like this. So they at 139, let me see the cost. I know they change, stuff changes all the time. So I would be over, this is two users, meaning you can have one bird dog, $49 a month. These, it's leaving these lists off. And if you pay the 119, the pre foreclosures for your area literally you can click on a button they'll pop up on the phone app so most of us can pull pre foreclosure list from the title company or you know um, wherever you're pulling that list but if you want it to be integrated into their map then you got to pay for the one up so I like it. It would be a good one to try, something to try and at least put in the seven days. You actually can do a lot in seven days if you get out and drive and have the time. <laughs> Maybe pull a deal off. Yep. All right, all right. That's exciting. What else do you think? Have you have you used uh gosh, there it goes. Uh, Retta, have you used batch driven or anything like that before? No, I have not. I, have oh, not. No, I haven't. Ron hasn't. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, Ron. Yeah, it's <laughs> it sounds good. Yes, it's nice to have everything right there. I, I've tried to do it by hand. It takes so long at every house, and then you have to go home and type in the address, and then try to skip trace it and put it in a spreadsheet. And it really is just worth a little bit of money if you're going to use that as one of your one of your ways to do lead generation. It's much easier than doing it on paper and having to come home, look it up, and then search it on skip trace, and then try to get a postcard and put it in the mail. It just takes too long. <laughs> them all right but this one still gives you the vacant list so that's good at 49 dollars. but hopefully we're getting a head start on those yeah and their their company is based out of phoenix so very good anything else i can help either one of you specifically with since it's just us three So do, do, do you do any kind of like flipping and stuff like this? I mean, any professional flipping? What about lease options? I, 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 I'm going to try to get in something to that. Do you know anything about that? I do. I like lease options are probably my favorite exit strategy. Um, so I have done flipping. The last I flipped, uh, 2014 was the last one. I have one that we're in the middle of in Birmingham, Alabama. So it's the first one I've ever done virtually, but uh, I, and it's the first one I flipped myself. 
since 2014. Um, my team here that, that I work for in Phoenix it has a, a handful going at any time um, flips, but we've got a general contractor on the team and it's not me per se managing it at all. I, mm -hmm. I mostly do their acquisitions here, which talking to sellers and finding new deals and running the numbers. And um, we, we do lease options. Uh, lease option means you're technically going to find a property and uh, you can either take it down. Ideally, you would buy it from the seller, what we call subject to. Right. Um, that way your name goes on title. And when you quote, sell it or rent it, whatever you're doing with it, so you would sell it on a lease with the option to buy. And that is just a rental agreement with a, a option document. It's a one page saying you have the option to buy this property at, at X price. And this option is costing you, I we don't let anything go for less than 10K option money because if it's less than that, they can just be a, a regular tenant. And we want them to have option money, skin in the game where they want to take care of the property. Um, and then of course, when, they're, when they've executed that option at the date they move in, they're responsible for the repairs and uh, upkeep on the property as well. So for us, uh, lease optioning um, rental property is a stronger play because we have less repairs, less headaches, typically a better tenant slash soon to be buyer. But the truth is only about 15% of lease option buyers ever close out on them. So they get married, get a new job, want something different. And um, only 15% typically close. So when that happens, they do lose that option money, but you clean it back up and, and do the same thing. Again, lease it with the option to buy. So I have a good rental agreement, a decent one, but there may be one more state specific for you. I think we've got one on the MLS too, right, Retta? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So if the if your if if your state has one on the MLS, I kind of lean towards going with that just because you're going to be for sure covered over a generic lease. But it, we've got generic ones too. It's just so so so. What are you saying? Maybe you should have two. Um, suggest getting a, a, a lease and a, and a, 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 do you have anything and anything any examples of basically what how you what you use. I ask you one more time. Do you Where's have any kind of like exa any examples of you know stuff that you use for you know your uh, I mean even though yeah. it's different in Louisiana, then I think you can maybe send out if you you know email me or whatever that you may have you how you yeah. use Yeah, yeah, I do. I have one. Uh huh. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. There's that option agreement. Yeah, I'd love I'd love a copy as well. Because, because I tell you what, it's you know I've got a couple of rental properties, but see, I'm thinking about it. Like I said, at least I'm not thinking about converting because it's better. Like I said, they, they do the work; they don't keep calling you all the time. You know, if they, you know even if they yep. decide to move later, or of the of the option doesn't work out, and and they and, and they started renting, at least uh, they they feel like that you know take better ownership of the property if they figure they got it, they buying it. You know, that's right. Let me see if I can grab that. Yeah, like I said, they got skin in the game. They got money into it, so they get you know. They, you know. Yeah, I've seen. We did one earlier this year. And when I say we, I, I mean the team. But the lady put a hundred thousand dollars down on a three hundred thousand dollar house. Now you know she's not. She's gonna take care of that house. <laughs> right. You were, thank you. Would anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I couldn't believe it. I was like, how much? Wow. So let's see. I would still read through these and change anything that needs changed, but um, let's look here. This option to purchase or add it to. Yeah, this is it. All 
Freddie, you said you like legalese and contracts. Did you work for an attorney at some point? Are you talking to me? Yeah. Did you you said you uh, like legalese and contracts? Did you work in in the legal field? No, actually not. But but I have a degree in accounting and finance, and years and years ago, when. Uh, when my husband and I were forming lots of corporations and, and uh, moving houses and, and doing different things, uh, you know, I got to where I got to where I could do anything, just I could even set up an LLC, just boom, wow. <laughs> right? But that's, that's been, a, it's been a long time ago. And, um, and, Oh, and, and I pretty well, when I was getting my degree, if you will, um, I was thinking about going into law school, but then by the time I got my degree, I'm like, I've had it with schooling. I don't want to do anymore. So <laughs> I took I took a lot of law classes, which fascinated me, as well as accounting and finance fascinated me. Yeah, I I could see myself. I think you probably are a lot like I am. And my my best friend in real estate is in accounting, and and we get along super well too. But I think that uh, I can hear when you say analytical and and like contracts. I'm like she thinks a lot like me, and most people don't yeah. <laughs> like all that stuff. Right. <laughs> Recent. Can we get these. Out? Oh, here it is. Rental agreement. Okay. So let's do this. Rental agreement. Let me get this shared with both of y'all. If I don't do it, the day gets busy, and then I'm like, no, where did their uh, information go? All right, share. All right, there's the rental agreement. And let me get this option. Oh. Okay. And then... What y'all got plans for today? Are you going to work some real estate or do something different? Unfortunately, I have a couple of obligations I have to fulfill that are personal. So I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> I'm actually I've got one at eleven that I'm going to call her and tell her I just can't do this because it's it's a personal thing. Then it turns out I yeah. have an old friend coming up from Paradise Valley that doesn't have anything to do for three hours, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'll hang with you. And I'm like, what am I thinking? <laughs> What am I thinking? Are you serious? Because I'm always like running backwards already. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you. Well, I feel like you got lots to go through with this app and those documents. I should have everything shared to you. And uh, okay. definitely reach out if oh, I can help 10. you. Or... So your, yeah. your, your email is there on and that too, right? I, I guess yours there too. Excuse me, the email, the, questions. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, you can. Uh huh. Yeah, I'll do my best to answer. Sometimes I get busy, and you have to be like, "Answer me." <laughs> okay. But, no uh, problem. Yeah. Well. And if we put it in the REI USA group, that works as well. But so uh, yeah, I don't mind at all. So your email. Your email is I, the which one? The um. Alice. Adam. That Jimmy. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let me ask you one other question while I have you. Um, yes. You mentioned like subject two. Um, yes. So what, what's what's the game? I mean, I, I like that too because basically I understand that's um, you taking over. People just trying to give you their deal. So how have, have you, how does that work? That's that's pretty. Uh, I mean, it, it, you, it you have a, a contract of... for that too, huh? Yeah, we. 
it takes a little bit of getting used to just having that conversation in itself with the seller, but we do them every month. We do at least one, if not two. Um, and it's typically where they want more money than what they can sell it for to a cash buyer. Right. So um, sometimes we're able to say, hey, if you can leave your loan in place, we would be able to pay you a little more. We even do it sometimes on our flips to keep us from having to come out of pocket for everything, for all of that money, you know, let them leave it in place and pay them when it sells. But yeah, subject to it, you're just writing it up. Um, only if it's not an FHA mortgage. FHA mortgages have to be written up a little bit different if the mm -hmm. underlying mortgage on the house is uh, something other than FHA, then we just say we're, we're taking, we're buying this house for $200,000 subject to the first lien of $180,000 and we're paying the seller the 20,000 cash at closing. So it's just written up close to the same way a regular contract is. There's a couple other disclosures uh, to go over, but it would, I, we could do it, but it's a whole teaching on it. It's a, okay. A whole long class. Um, clever investor did a, a few of those. Uh, Who they does? came out with clever investor. I do work for them, but he just released the free house formula. And for $97, I know what he paid for those contracts because I helped him get them with the attorney. And it was uh, almost $30,000 worth of legal work. Really? And he's selling that for $97, uh, all the training, the webinars and the paperwork and, okay, and so all I, of that. I, I, I might have to write your email down and see if I can get you the link to it, um, to that $97. We told him to sell it for $997, <laughs> but uh, he, he only wanted the $97. He wanted to, everybody to have it, so. I like it. And that is the paperwork that we use um, since he ju literally ju it's all been updated and done within the last uh, four months. So. Um, yeah, I'd like that link as well. To, uh, okay. I will find that and shoot that to your emails here shortly. And um, cause he does, it's better to learn that in depth stuff with a webinar where you can rewind and replay the parts that are hard to understand. And it is hard at first until you get through the first deal and, and then it kind of just makes better sense. You know, the first time is always the roughest. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, I'll shoot those over to you here shortly on the creative finance stuff. And then you've got my email. So you run into anything, if I can help you comp or you need a buyer or just want a second opinion, I'll always give you one and, and not uh, give out your, your property information. I know it can be nerve wracking to be like, is somebody going to steal my deal or get a hold of my address? But we do it all day with the students. So yeah, if you run across the property, you need a second opinion on what it's worth or the repairs or how to handle the situation or that situation just shoot me an email and we will or hit me on facebook and and we'll get it taken care of on facebook yeah i, yeah, I might want you alice, to look at this one that i'm looking at alice zen adams where is that We'll have it on the emails you send, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, I'll send those here in a few minutes. And I hope you have an amazing day. And we'll see you again soon. Yourself. And thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank You're you, welcome. Thank you. Bye, guys. Hope to meet you. Bye.